I'm Jen Mulvihill on a quest to find indie inspiration around the world. And with me right now is Kurt St. Thomas. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So you have a film presenting DOA. It's on Saturday the 25th, and it's at the Magnolia Independent Film Festival in Starkville, Mississippi. And this is a feature length, correct? It is, yes. 80, 83 minutes, roughly. Right. Give or and take 30 seconds. You want to tell me a little bit about the film? Um, well, the film is about a, uh, a man who's been poisoned and he uh, sets out to uh, solve his own uh, murder mystery, essentially. It's a remake of a movie uh, that was originally done in 1949. And my version also takes place in 1949. And it is in black and white. It's film noir. And um, it's a different script, but it's basically the a similar premise. And I used some of the names from the original and some things, but pretty much all new script and uh i just used the the original movie as uh like a guide of inspiration right i actually have seen the movie um and very impressive and i didn't know that there was um an original film kind of a based off of so now i'm gonna be looking for that one <laughs> yeah there's an original movie and there's been a couple of remakes and uh people have asked me like, why would you remake a movie that's already been like remade and stuff? And uh, I heard uh, Guillermo del Toro talk about something about um, this, where he was saying, he's like, well, they don't say like, oh, we're doing a remake of Hamlet or, you know, something like that. Like a good story is a good story. And uh, I just love the premise of the original story. And um, I moved here to Florida and, uh, I live in the oldest city in, in the United States, St. Augustine, Florida, and it's uh, just an amazing town. And uh, I just started, you know, walking around and looking at it and thinking like, yeah, it's like a little Hollywood back lot all within blocks of my house. And, uh, and then that just kind of got the wheels rolling and went from there. Very impressive too. I, I was admiring, you know, the the scenery around there. I had to look up. Yeah, it was really it was really filmed there. I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> All with, with, within blocks of my house, which is is crazy. I mean, um, a lot of some stuff we built sets, and um, I rented this warehouse, which uh, you know, I like I could hit a golf ball from the front of my house to it. It's that close and. Uh, like the barber shop that you see is three blocks away and um yeah it's pretty weird like it just how i had already had the idea to make the movie when i moved here but then once i got here it just it really kind of opened up and uh things just connected and it was pretty convenient being near your house too i, I imagine <laughs> yeah my house was like home base for the movie and um uh, you basically we would eat every day the crew would eat in the driveway I bought picnic tables <laughs> and uh, my mom's friends my mom is the production designer and uh, she's never worked on a film ever in her entire life and uh, most of her friends were like people that helped out on the movie uh, did the catering that kind of stuff but yeah my living room was wardrobe my dining room was makeup uh <laughs> My cinematographer was in one bedroom. Uh, you know, I had, would usually have another crew member. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Like a month of just insanity. But I love that. That I just love that. And well, you, yeah, that's what you live for, you know? Yeah. And, and you have a, a pretty extensive bio. Um, so you've done some movies, you've done music videos, and you're um, a legendary radio DJ. <laughs> I don't know about that. A legend in my own mind, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. And you've also I, written a book about Nirvana. Yeah. Yeah. I've done a lot of stuff. And um, somebody asked me, you know, it's funny because to me, the pinnacle of like all the stuff is kind of movie making because in some ways, like, it takes all these elements of like, I have had this very weird career and I've kind of shifted around and um, 
and it's kind of like all of the elements into one thing. Like, uh, you know, I worked at record companies. I have been like really familiar with recording studios and I've worked with some of the best recording engineers ever in the world. And, um, so stuff like that really helps when you're making, you know, a movie on, you know, no, no money. And, uh, but, you know, you learn a lot of tricks along the way of, you know, making music videos for, you know, very low money and just, you know, you know, you got to fail a lot to try to get somewhere, I think. So, well, do, do you recall that pivotal moment in your life when you, when you decided, Hey, I want to make them, I want to make movies. Um, I don't, I don't know if there was like a, a, a moment. Well, well, I guess there kind of was. So I worked with this um, guy, Mike Joshua, and he, uh, we worked at a radio station together and basically um, he wrote a script. And one day he said to me, he's like, he's like, hey, yeah, I wrote a script and he handed me the script and I was like, I want to read it. And he was like, you want to read it? And I was like, yeah. I mean, this was the, you know, early 1990s and like the independent independent film world was exploding and like kevin smith you know had clerks and robert rodriguez had el mariachi and uh you know quentin had reservoir dogs and um yeah uh edward burns had you know the brothers mcmullen and you know suddenly there was that thing in the air where you were like hey we could make a movie like for 30 grand you know maybe um and anyway i read the script and i loved it and i was like yeah let's make the movie and he was like how are we gonna do that and i was like i don't know i was like kevin smith worked at a convenience store and he made a movie and we work at a radio station so i feel like we have a leg up maybe Mm -hmm. I was I was probably wrong because obviously Kevin Smith has done a lot better than I have. But um, yeah, that was kind of the thing. And um, and then it just kind of started and I read lots of books and watched lots of DVDs with the director's commentary and we figured it out. And then we finished that movie and then we entered a bunch of film festivals and we ended up screening at the Magnolia Film Festival in the year 2000 and we won the festival and uh it was a really big deal at the time so is that was that captive audience yeah that was captive audience so yeah that was uh yeah ron tibbet was uh there and i i met ron and i ended up becoming you know pretty friendly with him and spoke to him many times over the years and actually my second film the red right hand uh got rejected from the festival and oh. uh and I he actually but was so cool about him is that he actually like called me and like told me like he didn't just send like the email or whatever you know he, uh -oh. like actually picked up the phone and called me he's like I'm really sorry it's just not right for the festival and well, I was like nice. I get it it's a horror movie it's cool like you know whatever so <laughs> Well, that was really so nice. I'm really I'm really psyched and like super honored to be like coming back to the festival and like having um, DOA screen and it's cool and my first movie was in black and white and then I made two films in color and now I'm back to the black and white and back to the Magnolia Film Festival so oh, like maybe you gotta stick to the black and white huh? <laughs> yeah I don't know I, I don't know I don't know if distributors feel that way but uh I don't know. The people that seem to get it seem to really like it. So, right. Well, who That's was cool. your inspiration? Do you have anyone that inspired you, uh, directors or a movie or a book that inspired you? I have so many things that ah. inspired me that it's a, almost an impossible question. But, um, okay. but the originally I read Robert Rodriguez's book, Rebel Without a Crew, and that that really that got the the like the wheel spinning of like kind of how could I do this and um but then like over the years like with DOA I mean there's obviously a lot of inspiration from the original movie because mm -hmm. you know um right. and, and kind of film noir movies in general and then um but I'm a big Alfred Hitchcock fanatic so I mean there's like all kinds of 
uh, references to Hitchcock in the movie, you know, but um, when I originally set out, um, the thing that I told John Doe, who's the star of the movie, um, I said, it's a, uh, it's um, basically, um, I want to make my version of Chinatown. So in some ways, that was kind of the thing that was really like the movie that really inspired, even though you would look at Chinatown and probably think it's nothing like DOA, but a lot of underlying current things in there. Right. Well, we're looking forward to, to seeing the, the, the reviews and see how it goes at the Magnolia Film Festival. And that's again Saturday, uh, the 25th. This is Kurt St. Thomas. And we thank you so much for sharing your inspiration with us. And thank you. we will hopefully we'll see you again. And until we meet again, uh, let's keep changing the world one story at a time. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great talk. Thank you.